you were going back to defend a world championship for this thing called Biggs Backyard Ultra World Championship. Yes. Because uh, you won it in 23. Or you won it in 21. Right, right. Right? And do they skip years for individuals? Is that what it is? Yeah. So just to like, kind of maybe give a little like overview for anyone might be checking this out that is not familiar with Biggs, uh, you basically cover a 4.167 mile loop every hour. Uh, it's 11 hours on the trail, the trail, uh, and then you have 13 hours on the road. And so across every 100 or across every 24 hour period, you're covering 100 miles. And the, the, you can see the, the hills here. I love this, by the way. This, this is, is awesome. so cool. This, this is, is the first time we've ever uh, had this set up. The live uh, footage mm -hmm. from, from Big's backyard. There's when you're getting ready to start. That, that's right at the start. That's amazing. Um, you know, the French team led by Fabian was just spectacular. And I, I do hope that they're able to somehow, uh, yeah, this is great seeing all the guys uh, put this into some documentary, possibly two down the road. Um, but it, it's the, the trail, yeah, wow, it's so cool to be able to see this. <laughs> the trail is about 40 or 450 feet of climbing every hour and you have rocks and roots so you're just doing this little out and back of about 400 meters. Hey, what are you thinking right now? Uh, just, so we'll jump, so right just, now, it's okay. what are you thinking right now? I'm right there? there in the middle. I'm, right, I'm just thinking uh, relaxation. Just, uh, just enjoy this. Take in the, uh, you know, the atmosphere and um, start to get familiar with the, the sounds and the sights and take in my senses. So I remember yeah. you saying, because you've had so many interviews and articles and stuff, I heard you say that the first day was the toughest first day you've ever had of this race. Yeah. I, is, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I really did. Uh, and uh, it wasn't that it was like uh, I was going to quit or something, um, but in terms of like my, my battery, like my battery was on lower charge that first day than it normally is on the first day. And the reason largely for that, well, there's a couple things. Like one is that the night before, I only got like three hours of sleep. And I'm usually really good at the psychological element of like just calming my body, just putting myself in a place like this, say like this is a race like any other race. Uh, you know, I don't have to like do anything. I just have to, you know, treat it like any other race. Um, but I just couldn't like calm my mind down. I was just, my mind was like charged, thinking about this and this and that and this. It was just all over the place. I couldn't calm my mind down. I woke up at like 2 a.m. I tried to go back to sleep. I'm just laying there for hours. And uh, so I came in with that and it was just a bit of a busy time leading up to this because my mom moved to Maryland. I was like packing the final things out of her house on Wednesday night. And then we were also engaged in, in like the Brighton Center. So like on one end, it was like fantastic uh, to, to pour energy into this and it's for a cause we both love. Mm -hmm. um, but I also was devoting additional time to that, that element in the last you know, six, seven days prior to the race you know, in terms of energy, meeting with people, plotting it out. And there's nothing wrong with that but it was also taking a little extra battery to do those sort of things. To do the fundraiser stuff. Yeah. We were so, having media. So I was we wondering interviews. if like, like doing this <laughs> ambitious uh, goal of going after $100,000, if actually that, that could actually slightly work against me, you know, because I was putting that extra energy into, but ultimately it didn't, right? um, of course, no way. They just had the runner from Germany. Did you hear what happened to him at WAP 81? Uh, is that the guy who forgot I, his time? Yes, I did hear about that, yeah. So Laz is like, uh, Laz would be an amazing teacher, and he was a coach. And like, he, what he does really well is there's, it's only black and white. Like, uh, unfortunately, um, for the German runner, he like left on the loop, and I think he may have got out like five or so minutes and then he came back five minutes uh, and he went into his tent to get his timing chip. And the rule is that you cannot come back 
to your tent to get anything. So I don't know what would have happened. Like had he just completed the loop and he had forgot his timing chip, they probably would have said, okay, like, you know, we can see other runners saw you do the loop. Um, but unfortunately, because he came back, he got disqualified. And like, it's very difficult, I feel for him. Um, it could happen to any of us, uh, but but Laz is is very like uh, black and white on the rules, and you do kind of need someone that is moderating that doesn't leave any gray area. Like it's it's difficult, but you kind of need that, and it's yeah it's a, it's it's a very difficult situation, but that's the thing. Like when you get your you're into running for two, three, four days, and then you, you get to a point where it's, it can be more difficult to like make choices. Uh, and especially the later, the more days we went and into the night, like runners would get more, some runners would get more delirious. So it's, it, it, it has, it, that's one of those things you're, you're always trying to, to like think about not yeah, all right, I'm not gonna be able, after I've left, I cannot accept anything from my crew member. Or if I come back, and say you're like just really tired and for a moment you forget to cross the, the line and you go directly to your tent. Like that would be, you'd be out if you then grab something in your tent. Like so it's, you have to be, leave some level of like being cognizant of what's happening and being careful too. I noticed that we spent a ton of time here. This was the first time that it was ever streamed live, right? Well, no. Actually, in 2021, it was. Okay. However, not to this level. Okay. Like, the one in 2021 was, I, I don't know because I didn't watch the whole thing, but I would say probably this had, like, double the amount of, like, um, camera time and... You know, I, I, I know that you know, some people think like, oh, this was not good for the runners. I, the cameras didn't bother me at all. Like, um, to be honest with you, whenever I'd like say, okay, I need to go in the tent, and I just like pull this curtain across, like they totally knew, like they backed off and went away. Um, I did, I'm gonna end up doing, I think about 10 ultras this year. And like, this is the only ultra over where you know, they have like a live feed like this. And for me, I really liked it because my, you know, Kelly was able to watch, mm -hmm. my students were able to watch, my parents, um, they were able to be there with me, which was amazing. So I don't have anything, like I, I actually really like this. I mean, it's like also a way for our sport to like, to be seen like in such a way. And, and, and there's times where I do races where like for example, like the Barkley race, you're running out in the middle of the woods and there's only two specific places that they allow people with cameras and video cameras. Um, they're not allowed in the woods. Or the Canadian death race. The Canadian death race was in Alberta, Canada. And like in that race, there were like cameras in only a couple of spots. It really was difficult to get up into the mountains. I mean, there were a few like photographers, but it was just like, photographers not like live like uh, feeds so uh, from th this is like a, something that's come up uh, recently in topic with our with our sport um, I think it's actually really I loved it I love that they did this and it wasn't like over intrusive like the the cameras and the videos were predominantly at the camp they did have drones that were on the road um, and like once we were into the woods there was like two spots where they had, or three spots maybe where they had a camera that was set up, but really across like uh, four miles to have three cameras set up and then have cameras when you're coming through camp, like that didn't bother me at all. I love the fact that people could like watch it and I wasn't even thinking about the cameras. I was kind of like totally just focused on other stuff so I really didn't even realize that the cameras were like, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't realize they were like live feed until like the, I think the third or fourth day. Well, was it was like, following you a little bit. So right. the transition, yeah. when it was shrunk down to 10 or 15 runners, 
maybe even 20, yeah. there was somebody that was running behind you guys at times. Yeah, at that times. That was cool. And I, it didn't bother me. I mean, okay. I kind of like thought, oh, I hope this person doesn't fall because we're going over some like rocks and roots and I'm like, they're carrying a the camera. Um, but yeah, it was like for like 30, 40, 50 meters. You know, it wasn't like a really long duration. And, and it was also typically right in like when you enter the, the woods. Yep. So for me, this is uh, kind of the evolution of running. So I mean, when I first started running ultras like 27 years ago, you know, uh, there might be some like a couple cameras, like that is it. <laughs> I mean, the news might come out and do like a little piece on it, but that, that was it. Like, I mean, this was really uh, pretty awesome that like, I mean, I had people tell me that don't even run, that we're watching it in Cincinnati, or like uh, people message me on Instagram from like, like, uh, geez, I mean, so many different countries, like different you, countries you, I've not even been to You caused my real estate company to be really <laughs> inefficient that week. Uh-oh, <laughs> yeah, I, bet. I heard that a couple of times, yeah. Um, no, it was, it was neat for us because it did give us a different insight. You didn't just hear about just this, there's a number. I think everybody who talks to you that doesn't know ultras, they hear the details of these races. And then this one about this 4.167 miles every 24 hours. And I think it takes two or three minutes of hearing one of the participants tell us really what that is. And a couple times our brains are like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So you all, oh, so you have to run 4.167 miles in an hour. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. That doesn't sound terrible. Yeah. Well, but every hour. What do you mean every hour? Well, it doesn't matter when you finish, right? You have to finish it within 60 minutes. If you don't, you're out of the race. And then no matter what time you come in within the 60 minutes, the rest of the hour is what you get for your break, for everything you need to do. Eating, go to the restroom, sleep if you can find 60 seconds. And it's like, well, how long do you do it? Well, until someone quits. What? Yeah, until someone quits. And so what, what's that mean? So to you... This went for four and a half days this time. 108 what you all call loops. Wow. How long could you have gone? Yeah, it was, it's hard to say. Like, uh, honestly, we got into a rhythm. I got, I got into a rhythm, it felt like on the, the, the third and the fourth night where it was just like this frequency. Everything just became automatic and it, you know, it's not to say it wasn't a struggle. It was a struggle, uh, but I was able to just hit that 55 minutes, 55 minutes, 55 minutes on the fourth night. And um, like my mind was so determined, it seemed like it was easy. Like not, it wasn't easy, but like in terms of what I was thinking for we were just gonna go through like the fifth night. What do you, when you looked at your uh, wrist right there, yeah, I was what, just what checking you, the time. So okay, I know so you're, on, so you're on 49. You're on yeah, the, so I know exactly what time I should be at that turn. That like, was at the three uh, mile turn, right? Yeah, I know exactly. If I look at the time, I know exactly what, like that's still like about a mile. And I think it's about a mile or so to the finish from there. Yep. But I know what time I'll hit the finish based on like that little turn right there. Yep. I know exactly what time I'm gonna hit the finish when I'm coming around this turn. And so, so if you're a little behind, you step it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, I could, yeah. Um, yeah it's so odd, you got these, all these turns. That's, that's great. Yeah, uh, so it, it is, um, yeah, it's just really cool to see the camera. How long right. do you think? So you already won it. So yeah, here's so I, I really you, you think that it would have, so. it could have gone, it, it definitely could have gone through the night um, if I just, you know, just hitting like my baseline, everything I had to execute, every lap. It could have went through the night. Which is through 120. It, which would have brought us to like 500 miles. And then it could have gone out to the, to the trail loop again. Which that's a crazy thing. So like, I mean, every time you think, well, used to be like people thought finishing the third day on the trail would be not possible. It would be impossible. And then the idea of finishing a fourth day on the trail seemed impossible. And then we hit, we finished a fifth day on the trail and like that, that seemed like unfathomable.